Hello, everybody. Good morning today. Greetings from Istanbul, Turkey. Just wanted to introduce to you guys my new munchkin cat. Her name is Coco. She's got tiny little legs. Very, very sweet cat. I would never have guessed that a cat could be this expensive. But hey, if the fiance wants her, she's going to get her. So she's going to grow up to be about two kilograms, a little over four and a half pounds, maybe. And she's got tiny, tiny little arms. Anyways, just want to introduce you to her. I'm going to wait for some more people to get on. Come on, Coco. Go. Go. Bye-bye. Ellie, come. Okay, so good morning, everybody. I plan to live stream. I understand my camera is a little bit shaky. I'm getting a floor mount instead of a desk mount because the way it's mounted is pretty high up. So I apologize about that. So I'm going to be live streaming every single day for the next 52 years. <laughs> uh, exactly 10 in the morning, turkey time, and also 7 p.m. turkey time. And the reason for this is because, good morning everybody, thank you for joining me. There's not a lot of people joining me yet, but I plan to make this one of the bigger YouTube channels. In 2018, it was a really big channel. I was one of the first people to hit like 50,000 subscribers on YouTube, but I just stopped making videos in like 2018 because I just mainly focused on Twitter. And the reason for this live stream every t every day twice a day is because i just want to be more engaging with the community i want to share my thoughts my experiences i believe that i'm one of the people that got in extremely early in crypto and had a lot of great success where i grew literally under four thousand dollars of ethereum in one year to over seven figures to the point where i'm able to live fairly comfortably but I still want to focus on the market because I'm obsessed about it. So now the goal is just to share what I know, dedicate my time to the public, and get feedback from people as well to see if I can share information with you, teach you something, answer a few questions. So it's just my way of giving back to the community. So thank you for joining me. Today, we're going to cover two main important topics. One will be, will Bitcoin break out to newer highs around the $23,000 range and we're also going to review the seven trades that I took yesterday but we're just more so going to summarize it on the coins ARPA, XRP and Wi-Fi that I traded yesterday where I was able to take in a $7,200 profit with zero losses and that's pretty impressive considering I haven't really made decent income. Last month it was a brutal month for me. I made less than $40,000 profit that's one of my slowest months that I've had in about two years. Unlike August last year in September, where I was up $350,000, and then in one eight-minute trade, I lost $100,000 on Axis when it ended up going parabolic, and I was in a short position for $1.4 million, and I lost that trade so fast. 7.5% or like seven, around 7% 7 went up on 1.4 mil in eight minutes on Axis, and I'm like, oh my gosh. I tried to short it right here, I'll show you. In hindsight, I said to myself, you know what, it's definitely gonna gonna break, It's gonna sh we're gonna be able to short it right here. I tried to short it at the $100 psychological level, okay? I'm like, I automatically just said to myself, you know what, $100, it's definitely gonna hold there, okay? At 100 bucks, like right here, I tried to short it, no joke. Psychological level, $100. Looking at every other indicator, in hindsight, there wasn't any bull or bearish divergence whatsoever. So I literally tried to short it right here, okay? And then, literally, in about eight minutes, right, it went up. <laughs> you can see it go up right here. You can see it go up 20%. I closed my position when it went up 7% at 107 which was in about eight minutes and i took the most devastating loss that i was ever that i ever took in my life in such a short period of time my second biggest loss was in 2018 where i took a ninety thousand dollar loss and that was because i was trying to long i forgot which coin it was honestly i think it was iota but bitcoin took a really big dump it dropped about 30 percent in in two hours 
And that was my second most devastating loss. Velmighty, how do I handle such big losses? Well, first of all, I understand that losses are a part of the game, right? You are inevitably going to take losses, but it's how you treat these losses that will eventually define you as a trader in the future. If you're able to take your losses and you scrutinize them, you dissect them, you see what went wrong, you keep a journal and you write down what you did wrong, how you could have done it better. And then each day, you should be reviewing these notes to ensure that you minimize these mistakes. I think that great traders, they're created by reviewing their mistakes, but more importantly, remembering why they made those mistakes. So keeping a diary and reading it every single day is important. It's the equivalent of being a good student. You want to you wanna review your notes at the end of the night? You want to review your notes before class, right? This way, you're really caught up to the class and you know exactly what's going on. Understand that losses are a gigantic part of the game and people get wrecked. I get wrecked quite often still and I show my losses. Just a few days ago in the Discord group, I made a, this wise, great decision to short $250,000 of Bitcoin and I lost $14,000 and I shared that with my group. But I'm up way more since then, of course. So it's just a part of the game and understand that the people that get shaken out are the ones that will take these losses and they're gonna they're gonna not learn or improve on them the better traders that will stick around and be profitable in the future they're gonna take these losses and really improve on them so let's get to bitcoin so right now that was a really good question by the way velmighty i enjoyed it so right now it's very obvious where the resistance is and it looks like there is some massive momentum going to the upside we originally thought that or i originally thought that this was the resistance we'll say right here which it is okay considering some bull trapped regions a bull trapped region is basically a region where where the, the price it looks like it's about to go up right but instead the bulls that went long on it they get trapped and the bears end up driving the price down it's really important to consider these levels and allow yourself some wicks you see there's a wick going up there which is at 0 0.81 so consider that and Bitcoin looks like it's attempting to break this region. When we saw this yesterday, when I saw this, right, this doji candle, it's a shooting star, followed by another doji, automatically I would have assumed, you know what, Bitcoin's probably going to break down from the channel. So we see a beautiful channel. Everything has been about channels, channels, channels this month, or trend line supports, trend line resistances. Once the trend line breaks up, long it allocate a small half a percent to a one percent stop loss so right here we see a little bit of a wick right a little bit of a wick and you've got to go to a low time frame to be able to day trade this so for example on a one minute chart if you see you got to wait you got to wait for the candle to close above it wait for the candle to close above it on a low time frame and then wait for another candle to wait to close above it okay so here's the rule for playing breakouts Wait for on a low time frame, depending on how volatile it is. Hey, good morning, Luigi. Thanks for joining me. So depending on how volatile it is. So for example, here on a one minute time frame, wait for a candle to close above it. Okay. And then once it closes, wait for the next candle to close above it and stay above it. Preferably a wick going to the downside, which shows that the bears tried to drive the price back down but the bulls rejected them with the wick up. And then the third step is wait for the trading range to be higher than the previous. So let's just say that this candle, right, closes like that. Just say the next one, just hypothetically. You get a wick coming down, right? And then the next one, preferably a bigger candle. It could be a wick coming down or not, okay? Sure, if the wick comes down, even better. You got two rejections. Now the next candle, right, wait for the trading range to get higher than the previous candle, okay? When the trading range gets higher, that is your confirmation for a breakout. That's really important to understand. Otherwise, you're gonna be buying on every single wick that goes to the upside. And you don't wanna do that because you'll be going in and out of trades too often. One of the main ways that people lose money on breakouts is because they enter too early or they anticipate the breakout without the confirmation. And when that happens, you're going to go in 
and out of trades, there's going to be slippage. There's going to be fees. And that even if it's a two, three thousand dollar position, those twenty, thirty dollars, they add up. They add up a lot. And I made this major mistake when I, I first started trading. So wait for these types of confirmations. It's going to really pay off. All right. So right now, Bitcoin is clearly attempting to break above this $21,500 range. If Bitcoin breaks above this particular range, okay, around here, we'll say here to here. I don't see resistance as one specific number. I see resistance as a range because there's always going to be some bear or bull trapped regions that we must consider with wicks. So right now, we see that the month in general has been all about the trend lines. A really good tool that I like is on the left here, go to parallel channel and then click on one end, make the first line and then click it again and then drag it. So this makes a really beautiful channel that we can see. And of course you might need to adjust it here and there, right? So here we're adjusting it and we're seeing that there's a channel in here. Okay. So when you see a channel, it's very clear which way the market can go. It's going to be obvious that it can go down. Huh, that's not down, that's up. <laughs> Just kidding, guys, testing you. So this could go down right here, of course, or up. So the channel breaks. They don't always go down. Often enough, we see lately, because we're at the bottom and coins are rallying hard, that there's a high possibility for channels to actually break to the upside. So you must wait. So when the channel forms, let's just say that we see only this amount here, okay? Let's say, let's just hypothetically say that we only see here. I'll bar replay it up to there, okay? So what you could do is you can assume that it could stretch further because you've got some relevant points. So if I bar replay this, right? Some people might take a long on some alt or even Bitcoin when it hits the channel. So it's coming down, right? It's gonna hit it soon, which we know in hindsight right so here's the next one right there right around there i'll bet you anything that a lot of people entered a long position right and here we go we go up now see this so now we're all the way up at the top so one of two things is going to happen we're going to break this channel and also break that resistance going to the upside or we're going to end up capitulating and the bolds will have given up and then we're going to correct even more but right now generally speaking the first time we attempt a resistance break, it doesn't generally happen unless the market is extremely bullish. The next time, the third time, has a higher likelihood, right? But of course, if you keep hammering it enough and it gets rejected, of course it will go down. But also, the opposite applies where maybe it's going to keep hammering it. If you keep getting higher lows, there's a chance of it breaking to the upside. Now, what do the indicators say, okay? Let's take a look at indicators and what we can see is that the weekly still down the next week i'm betting that when this week closes in two days the next week after will be the first histogram tick up that we get for a long time since literally march okay we've been downtrending since april the beginning of april actually longer than that yeah since about march here i think we're gonna get the first week the reason for me saying this is because we got a four-day dragonfly doji that is strongly implicative that the bears tried to move to the downside, but it went back upwards. Esser Soy, Gnaiden, Asilsenes, greetings from Istanbul. Hey, welcome here, Stressful Strugger. I'm really glad to have you. Make sure you guys are also following me on Twitter. If you don't already, make sure you hit that like the subscribe, and also the notification button. I'm trying to just build up my YouTube a little bit, get back to where it was in 2018. Wishful thinking. <laughs> just kidding. Okay, so we got this Dragonfly Doji. Great. So we also got a tick up, right? So this is momentum on a high time frame. We're extremely low on every single indicator that you can see. We're oversold. This is one of the most oversold regions that we have ever been in. The last time we got this low on the RSI, on the weekly was in 2014. This is the lowest that we've ever been. Let me show you guys, okay? Let me show you one from BTC. Let's go to, I don't know how long Coinbase has been around. 2016? So this is since 2015, okay? 2015, it goes back. So this is the lowest the RSI has ever been. 
in eight years, the lowest. So there's a high probability of us bouncing. Now I can't guarantee a breakout or a bounce, but what I can guarantee is that we're closer to the bottom than we are at the top, obviously. And we're getting very close to a bottom. There might be potential that we drop further down, but from the perspective of a professional investor and a day trader, that's not financial advice, is that this is a really good time to be dollar cost averaging. My public portfolio is up a really good amount. I'm keeping a small public portfolio of about $50,000 just to show my group how I manage it. It's a lot safer than keeping my private portfolio on there. In my private one, I manage $1.4 million. And in my public one, I manage $50,000 for the group where I also give my Discord group an opportunity to provide their opinion and what coins I can buy. And for the coins that they advise me on as a group, all the profits for that coin is given back to the Discord group as a giveaway. So it's kind of a fun incentivization for the group to get involved with my picks as well. So right now, it's a great time to be dollar cost averaging. Let me just give you an example of a dollar cost averaging, okay? So let's just say I buy, I'm just gonna use 0.1 because it's easier. Let's just say I bought one Bitcoin right now, 21,400. And if it gets to, if it literally gets to $70,000, Okay, again, the all-time high, my $2,140 will turn into $7,000, right? That's huge. Let's say the price drops lower, right? Let's. You know what? I'm going to use whole numbers just to make it easier. I'm sure you can use the math. Let's just say it drops lower to 15000 and I bought another Bitcoin. So now my average price is at 36400 But if it got to $70,000, Again, which it will in a few years. I'm very bullish on Bitcoin long term. Okay, if it gets there, that's $140,000 for the price of both Bitcoins. That means that I just made a $103,000 profit. Let's say it drops even lower to $10,000. Okay, I'm going to add another two Bitcoin. If that happens, then what's going <clears> to, <throat> then my average price is now going to be. 10,000 my average price is now 56,400 okay so I got four bitcoins now at hold on what's my average sorry my bad my bad <laughs> pretty bad at math this morning okay so my average price here is 18,200 for the previous one so if it got to if it got to 140,000 that yeah the math is right I would be making a profit $103,000. Let's say it drops to 10,000. Now my average price is 14,100, where I've spent a total of 56,400 on it. So if that were the case, I would now have four Bitcoins at $70,000. That's $280,000 minus my initial acquisition price of 56,400. So I'd still be making about 4X on this, 5X, $223,000. So the power of dollar cost averaging, you never know when you're going to be at the bottom. We could be at the bottom already, but the last thing you want to do is miss out and not be in the game when you should be in the game. A lot of people wait for that bottom that never comes. And if it never comes, you're never going to catch the bottom. So the best thing to always do is to always dollar cost average when we're near a bottom, in my opinion. So right now, I don't know if Bitcoin's going to break here. But this could be an incredible moment for Bitcoin. If we break it, we're most likely going to hit the next resistance range here at 22,900. So if we break up here, the market's going to rally 10, 20% with Bitcoin. So let's see, make sure you set your alert, right click, go to alert, always go to greater than, and then every time. This way you're always going to hear it. Confirm that your sound's on, okay? Confirm that you can hear it. So then go to create, then you can drag it and drop it. Drag it and drop, put it at the high. Okay, put it at that high right there at 21,007. Okay, so that's important for you to know. Another thing you should be doing for Bitcoin, uh, I'm not on the right exchange, my bad. So put your alert, there we go. I'm really fast at this now because it's been done so many times. So now also set your channel. Okay, you know where the channel is like that and set another alert okay another alert for a potential breaking down 
So send an alert here. This way, if it breaks down, you know exactly when. And then this way, you can decide to sell off some coins that you're holding or not, etc. So put your alert there. This way, it's sandwiched, and you always know what's going on every single time. So let's go over the three trades, the three coins I traded yesterday that made me $7,000, okay? Like I mentioned, this month has all been about trend lines. What we see, even if you don't know anything about Elliott Wave Theory, you still can catch these trades. But from an Elliott Wave Theory perspective, it, I call a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, and a 5. One thing that I like to note is that these coins tend to rally at 3 in the morning, my time, or the daily candle close. If you're available to be trading or look at the market during the daily candle close, pay attention closely to what coins move. Let me give you an example. 3 a.m. is my daily candle close. Your time will be different. Then it rallied 9% at, from exactly 3 in the morning. And then the next day again, right here, this rallied at exactly 3 in the morning. Right, right around here, or where it ended. Right here, 3 in the morning. So right at 3 in the morning, literally, it started to rally, and ARPA ended up doing another 46%. So if you're available for the daily candle close, watch it. So I counted a 1, 2, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then they came down. At 7 o'clock, I woke up, still getting ready. It broke out. I never caught it because I'm not really looking at the market that much yet in the morning. So right around the morning when I was ready to trade between 9 and 10 o'clock, this started forming, okay? This ascending triangle started forming, and I called it for the group. This ascending triangle has the the basically the characteristics of a higher low, higher low, higher low, or sorry, yeah, higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low. But it keeps hammering at the same resistances. So that's the classical definition of a ascending triangle. And then what happens is it breaks down, right? You have to be patient. Ascending triangles in this particular case clearly demonstrates that they don't always break down. You might think to always long it, but this is your example right here. That's disproving that. They don't always break down. So this here was a conglomerate of a fifth wave forming. This right here, I'd have to call it a one, two, three, four, five to finish the fifth subwave. And then the short happened right there, my first short position on ARPA. That made me a good amount of money. I think it was $1,400. Really nice. And then the second one that happened was in the afternoon. Okay, I called this one hard for my group too, where we're seeing a trend line, okay? It's, you, it's subjective, okay? Sometimes there's gonna be wicks going below. Take a look at this trend line here, okay? Do you see Do you see how on the five minute time frame it's so much nicer? Do you see that? Wick below, wick below, almost touching it, wick below. Do you see how nice that is? But if you look at it on the one minute, it doesn't look that nice. So you must find the time frame that's gonna make it look the nicest, okay? So then the break happened, I didn't short it. I didn't short it there. The retest happened, I didn't short that either actually. But you could have shorted the break right here, okay? You could have shorted the break right there. But if you do that, you must allocate a stop loss back into the, re the support that was recently broken. That's an important rule. You must give yourself a stop loss above the support that was broken, okay? Because it will try to retest it. If it gets back up with a huge candle, that's your exit. That's one way to enter. So you can enter on a support break. The second way to enter is on a retest, okay? The retest may never happen though. That's the important thing. The retest may never happen at all. And if that doesn't happen, you lost an profit. Of course, this gives you the most confirmation though. Okay, that's the best confirmation to receive that says, hey, we rejected the resistance that was a support and now we're going down. Okay. <laughs> so many people come into the channel. I gotta hide that guy from the channel. It's crazy that people actually come into the channel to advertise. Wow, so many bots for everything. Anyways, so the third way that you could trade this is the support break, and that's how I traded it. I waited for a support break, support break, and I shorted it here. And I got a really big profit on that. I think it was 4%. I think I shorted it to closer down there. So that's the three ways to trade. One, the break here. This is the most profitable, but there's also chances, of course, of rejection, right? This is the most profitable if it keeps going down. 
The second one that you can take is a is a retest. And the third type that you can take is a break of a support. So those are the three ways that you can trade when it breaks down there. So now the second coin that I traded was XRP. Remember how I mentioned that everything is all about trend lines, right? Everything literally was. So I didn't catch a single long yesterday. Even if you know nothing about Elliott Wave Theory, this is how I caught it, okay? I caught an XRP short because all I did was I noticed it was going up. And from an Elliott Wave Theory perspective, I assumed that that was the fifth wave because this must have been somewhere a one, a two. The biggest one is usually the three. All of this is a four. So to me, this is a four in here. See it? Like this is some, some consolidation in there. And then it breaks that pattern. And therefore, this is the third. That must be the fifth. Therefore, if the support breaks, right? If the support breaks the trend line, it must drop. That's my logic behind all of these trades. Support trend line breaks, I'm in. Have you? Do you see how easy that was to catch it? 3% scalp I took in there. And then the next one that I took was right here. Okay, this break I was waiting for, I entered it in the shower and I didn't notice till about two hours later. Two hours later, it already dropped 4%. So I made a good amount of money on that coin as well. So that was a wonderful trade. And then the last one was Wi-Fi. This was probably the more impressive trade that I took. What indicator gives you a confirmation at a retest? It's more, hey, uh, Crypto Richner, it's more so having to identify it yourself and then observing it. Does that make sense? It's, there's not really going to be a crypto indicator that I personally know of. I'm sure that there's a lot out there that you could possibly find, but the best way I find is to manually manually observe it yourself so that you can react to circumstances forming rather than predict. So I hope that answers your question there. So for Wi-Fi, we, if you zoom really far out, okay, first of all, identify the resistance. So you see that right here, this is a really good resistance that I drew, 78.15. So what I saw was this, broke huge to the upside, 3% up, but you never know, right? Sometimes rallies could happen that looks like this. Let's bar replay it. Watch this, guys. Okay, so watch this on the one minute time frame that I play out for you. Actually, a 30 second time frame. So, Wi Fi has this support. I said to the group, if this breaks, I'm shorting it. But we see these peaks right here already, right? Whenever you see three peaks like this, make sure you're acknowledging a resistance. Because if it breaks above it, it's going parabolic, right? So watch this, okay? It's going up. It's going up. It's going up. Oh, crap. I'm thinking to myself, this coin is going to go parabolic. It's about to just smash the yellow resistance that I identified and the slope resistance at the same time. And this structure looks like it's going up, right? The slope is increasing, so it's getting more parabolic. And then what happens? It goes up. Right? It goes up. I'm like, fuck it. I'm not going to long it. It's too risky. There's no way I'm going to long it. And then what happens is this. Gets back to the trend line. Thinking to myself, hmm, if it falls back in, that means it failed. Right? Because it couldn't stay above the yellow resistance or the white. So if it comes back in, I'm going to short this shit. And then it comes back in. Next candle close. Rejected. Next one, if it trades in the lower range, I enter. I wait. I wait. Oh, I didn't enter yet. Do you guys see that? There we go. This candle, I entered it. Okay? So then you guys know the rest. There we go. Right? Like that. I think I closed mine around here. The lower trend line. I'm right around here. And I took a nice profit there of about 3%. So that was a really difficult trade to have taken. So those were my trades yesterday where I was able to make a really good amount on it. So it's been about 30 minutes already. I didn't want to keep this going for too long. Right now, Dan G, I'm using the moving averages 13, 55, and 200. So thank you very much for joining me today. I'm just kind of reading some of the questions here. I hope that you guys ask a lot of questions because I'm really eager to answer a lot of them. I live in Turkey. I have zero friends here. I don't, all my friends are back in Canada. I've got nothing better to do than to talk to a camera all day, you know? I live in the UK and I'm not able to do perpetual trading on Binance. 
do you have any suggestions where you, where you're able to trade? I heard of something called um what is it called Safe Pal? Right? That's like it's they provide liquidity for other exchanges, right? Is that what it's called Safe Pal? You guys will have to look into that. Yeah, I think it's called Safe Pal where people are able to like they provide liquidity for other exchanges and you can short through there. I would I would give that a look. But honestly, I've never had to do any research, Gary Cooper, because I live in well Canada, right? A lot of people that live in in countries where they never needed to worry about looking for another exchange, they're not really that familiar with all the regulations for each country. But I would look into SafePal, or if not, I would recommend asking in the Discord group. A lot of people actually trade in there as well. So I apologize, I'm not able to give you a clear answer for that. What would you do if you wait for the retest and the retest never happens? That's exactly what I mentioned, Danilo, right? If you trade the three ways of a breakout, like this is the three way of a breakout. Let's just say that there's a resistance, okay? A resistance that wants to break. If price is going, going. Option one is to buy the breakout. It's really, really possible to make great money if it keeps going, right? It's going, it's going. Breakout happens, no retest. Great, you made the most amount of money. But another thing that could happen is breakout happens and it fails. You got to cut your loss really quickly. Another thing that can happen is breakout happens, comes back, retests, and then boom. All three of these scenarios are really relevant. There's no best way to trade these breakouts. It's only up to you and what you prefer. Myself, I like to trade the breakout, but I like to look for volume that's that's increasing. I like to look for momentum indicators like MACD that's showing me there's going to be a skyrocket. I don't like to trade the ones where it's slowly breaking out. I like to trade the boom, I'm going to screw you up in the face kind of breakout, right? So then you can enter on here, on here where the breakout happens, right? But if you do that, you got to make sure you set your stop loss slightly below, okay? If it hits here, right, you're only going to lose 1%, 2% at most, half of a percent, because you entered near the breakout anyways, right? If it ends up, if, if it ends up failing, I mean, if it fails, right? If it fails. If you, if it keeps going, great, you won the trade easily. Now, if it comes back down and then it retests, but you're not stopped out, awesome as well, right? So the choice is yours to enter where you want. You can enter here where it may never happen as a retest, right? It may never happen. You can enter here on the breakout, right? Or you may, you may wait for, have a more strict criteria of confirmation where it hits here, but you're not gonna enter it until it breaks out of the previous high. Right? So there's so many different ways that you can play this. It really comes down to your personal preference. Okay, I'll take a look at storage since that's being requested right now. So it's a pretty boring coin just looking at it right now. Really boring in my opinion. Uh, I could not count it for the life of me. But what I can't... Actually, you know, I, I am able to. I apologize. This is obviously a 1 somewhere in there. Right? It's got to be. This broke down to a one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then that must be the five, clearly. So if that's the five, right? If that's the five, then the next wave must be a third wave. So this must be the two, what one? That must be the two. Therefore, if we take Fibonacci extension, we will assume that the third wave is going to be greater than the first wave. So if that's the case, then the third wave should get to at least up here so let's just assume right now that this is a one two three four this next wave that could happen should get to at least 0 0.756 and then you're gonna get a third wave that finishes at least it could be way bigger but that's how i see storage and that's what i've been waiting for it just slipped my mind there for a minute so i should probably put this coin on my watch list as well because it's making some major numbers right now there must be some fundamental news that i haven't heard about yet that's driving up the prices so this could easily happen where there's a fifth wave that's my opinion but of course another popular opinion is that the waves could always fail as well right if the wave 
waves fail, then the fifth wave may never even happen. Chantel, do you have suggestions where to learn trend lines? Is that the best place to start? I'm not uh, the best. Honestly, if you're really looking to learn how to draw trend lines, just try taking my basic course. It's like $40 or something like that. It includes all of the basics and it's in probably one of the best courses out available in Twitter space, in my opinion. But just generally speaking about trend lines, I would recommend to draw it on the most appropriate time frame that also accounts for wicks and for bull traps and bear traps. Going, There's no way I'm um, going up or down. There's no way, Ashwin. You can go read an Elliott Wave book if you want to learn WXY, WXYZ thoroughly. The reason why I don't care about WXY and WXYZs and double corrections is because it's just a waste of time. Elliott Wave to me, after seven years in crypto and specializing in Elliott Wave Theory and making well over seven figures is this, okay? Elliott Wave Theory to me is goes like this. If it's easy to count, then count it and trade that coin that's easy to count. But if you're trying to WXY and count double corrections and triple corrections, then you're just fucking wasting your time, to be quite honest. Why bother wasting your time trying to count stupid double corrections and triple corrections when you can move on to another coin to find potential? Don't waste your time trying to count the Elliott Wave Theory unless it's really easy. And if it's clearly account like really identifiable, then trade that coin. But if you're struggling, if you're going to look at this structure here and literally spend all day trying to WXY it, I'm I'm just going to say, you you know, you can use better use of your actual time, right? Way use. How do you use MACD in breakout and all? That's a great question. Let me give you a really good example on XRP, okay? Actually, not XRP. On storage, I think. I think it's storage. Pretty sure it was storage. Yeah, right here. So here, as an example, we see that I showed this example yesterday, but I'll show it again. On the four hour is where I noticed it. So the way you do bar replay is bar replay show the first half of the candle and then the second half. So you're going to see an animation for how it begins and then how it ends. So watch this animation. You'll see, okay? I don't know if it's this one or the next one. The next one, you'll see it go up and then you'll see it boom, break. So in the first two hours, you'll see it. Just watch really closely. You're going to see it move together and then break up. Watch close. Okay, this next one right here. Right there, then boom. Did you see that? It was really subtle. Let me show you again. Let me show you one more time. Okay, this is really subtle. The next one, watch. Not this one, but you're going to see it about to cross, then boom. See, like that. So just to give you an idea, that's how you anticipate MACD crossovers for breakouts. If you were to, if you were able to catch and anticipate that breakout, you could have caught this huge rally on storage here for 40%. So that's a really good question to ask and I enjoyed answering it. How do you put a pre take profit and stop loss before limit gets filled because I'm not always in front of my computer. Well, I don't want to I'm not in the trade right now. But I'll just go to my Binance account here. I don't have much on here because I just bought another full. I grew, yesterday I grew five thousand dollars to thirteen because I'm putting all of my money into spot and in my main portfolio, and I'm not that liquid in cash, so I'm forced to leverage right now. So putting a stop loss is easy. Let's just say I, I let's just say I put in. I'm I'm buying something. I'm buying 0.1 Bitcoin right now. I don't know why that's at fifty. That's crazy. I've never traded Bitcoin on futures before. So I'm at 0.1 Bitcoin right now, okay? So because I'm at 0.1 Bitcoin, you just go to stop, stop limit, or market, whatever you prefer. So for example, the mark price here, I'm going to go 0 0.1, 0 0.1. So if the mark price goes below, for example, 2100, right? Because right now I'm in a long, or sorry, if the if the mark price goes to say 2100, then I'm gonna sell it. So now I've got a sell order here, right? So if it goes to 2100, I'm automatically gonna sell my position. Does that make sense? Or if I'm going to go, like if or if it gets to, for example, 
22,000, right? I'm going to automatically sell my position for there. So it needs to hit this criteria. So now at 22,000, it'll automatically sell my price. So you can allocate that however you want. Or stop limit, for example, if you want to put 0 0.1, right? The stop price, uh, for example, if it hits 2100, right? If it hits, tw sorry, 21,000, my, my system here is going to put in a price, a limit order here to sell it at 21,000. So that's how you're able to do it. So the price hits 21,000, and the limit automatically puts in a price there. Anyways, I'm not going to teach too much about how to use Binance, to be honest. I'd rather focus on technical analysis and trading. This is not a Binance or a trading view crash course. Haha. <laughs> so I really appreciate the questions that you guys are asking me today. And I think I'm going to end it here. It's been about 41 minutes already. A lot longer than I thought it would be. So I appreciate You guys are welcome to DM me. Please DM me if you have any extra questions on Twitter or on Facebook or even Instagram or on Discord as well. Make sure you guys are giving me a like. It's just how the algorithms work. Hit the notification button and subscribe. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and I will see you tonight at 7 p.m., which is in eight hours. Bye now.